Hello again. This is your host Steven for Go Figure. Latest edition about my blabbings about something in regards to some new faction in regards to the classics. Masters of the Universe classics. This time I'm trying to talk to you about uh, Princess of Power and Shira characters that are on the side of the good. Now, of course, you, if you watched one of my previous videos, you already seen Shira, but here, here she is again, on her whole, on, on her steed, uh, uh, Swift Wind, and since I talked about her before, I'll just move on to her allies and friends who serve in the Great Rebellion. Let's see who we're gonna start with first. One of the few men who actually serves in the rebellion would be Bo. Now Bo is more of a like a bard and a very good uh, bow and arrow fighter who has magic arrows, and he's a very good and close friend of Shira and Prince and Princess Adora because Shira and Princess Adora are the same person, and he has a little friend that follows him around, and that's this funny little owl called Cowl. Cowl and Bo go together everywhere, and they will go through so many adventures together, fighting the Horde all the way. So, Bo is one of the actual few men that serves in the Rebellion, that's led by Shira, or Princess Adora, because both of them are leaders at different times. Now, aside from him, there is one more guy. Mind you, Bo is the one who showed up in majority of episodes of Shira Cartoon. This fellow showed up in a couple of episodes of Shira Cartoon as well, and of course this is not Bo, or another version of him. This is Seahawk, a man who became a pirate and did a lot of dealings with the Horde, the Horde Empire and would get paid with in gold in return. But Shira managed to persuade him to switch allegiances, and since he likes Shira, and he potentially would like to become her boyfriend one day, he decided to switch the allegiance and start fighting for the rebellion, which he actually did in one of the episodes, and he permanently switched sides. Seahawk comes uh, with two weapons. He's a laser sword, a pirate sword, and a shield, which is more of a like an electric shield of a sword. And I will show you what I mean in a second. Here is Shira and him side by side. The couple that's yet to be. According to the cartoon you can sort of see the hint that there is uh, something something going on there. Anyway, let's move on to the next. Uh, let me see. Some of the other characters we got here. For example, this one right here. This used to be the original leader of the rebellion before Princess Adora joined them. This is Glimmer. She would probably carry a, a, a title of a princess of a kingdom that was conquered already by the evil horde, and her mother, Queen Angela, was defeated and taken prisoner. Uh, Queen Angela, meaning her mother, will probably appear in the toy form during 2015, but for the moment this is all we get. We get her daughter. She's a very nicely done figure and she comes with her magic stuff and she comes with a small crystal ball which goes in her left hand which I don't like to put there because it doesn't stay put, it keeps falling off. But she's very nicely done and what, I'm, what I like about the Shira filmation figures is that they look exactly like they did in the cartoon series because the vintage toy line that existed in the 80s that made the Shira figures did not look anything like the cartoon but these figures finally do have the correct look about them. After Adora assumes the command of the rebellion, Glimmer becomes second in command willingly. Another lady who fights for the rebellion here would be Cast the Spell. She has uh, ability to cast very strong spells and to uh, knock the enemy uh, out of his senses in order to have him defeated. Uh, I personally gave her this spear because some of the other things she came with I wasn't very really happy with. But she looks more like a warrior now and she has this sort of a sun 
kind of shield attached to her waist. I'm not sure what the purpose of that shield is, but probably to confuse the enemy with the very bright colors, kind of like a peacock, I would say. A very popular character among, ma among many of the fans is this lady right here, another ally of Shira called Frosta. She is the, if I'm not mistaken, the queen of the frozen areas of Eteria. And she also fights the evil horde. And the main thing is she has a huge crush on Shira's brother, Heman. She likes the guy a lot and she's always trying to get his uh, attention, but it doesn't seem to work for now. But she will probably keep trying, I would assume. And she did appear in the Vintage Cartoon series. Now, another character which is very unique in my opinion is this lady right here. Her name is Double Trouble. Now, of course, she did appear in the vintage cartoon. The only problem is that when she was reissued in this form, they had to change the name for copyright reasons, so she wasn't call, called Double Trouble, but Double Mischief, so they changed her name a bit. She comes with a very long hair, she comes with an actual crossbow that looks exactly like that of Hordak, and at first I was deceived thinking she's on the side of the bad guys. But it turns out she's not. She's actually a, a, a girl who fights for the rebellion, but she's a double agent, which her name pretty much states. When you turn the knob on her head, you will re reveal that she has the power... Just a second, please. She has the power to become nasty. Her face will turn very nasty, but in reality she's more like Mystique from the X-Men. She's able to assume anybody's appearance and be like a double agent in the sense that she will faithfully serve Rebellion and if she has to sneak into the Horde, she will assume an appearance of a Horde member and go and spy on Hordak. So in reality she's on the side of the good with the ability to spy easily on the side of the bad guys. So much for her. Now we have this lady right here. This one is called Natosa. She is also a, a female warrior and a member of the rebellion. And she comes armed with a shield and a sword. Natosa, her name says it pretty much all what her main power is. Her cape is practically made to look like a net. And she's able to magically spin the net around the enemy and take the enemy prisoner without too much fight. So that's practically her main power. That's why she would have a name like that. And again, she would appear in the old cartoon series just as much. Now, oops, just a moment, please. I want to show you this lady here. This is Madame Raz, an equivalent of Oracle pretty much. And she's on the side of the good and serving with the rebellion. She knows a lot of magic, but she's also extremely clumsy. And her magic usually backfires just like the one of Oracle's. And she was probably a character that was used for the comedy relief. And this is her faithful broom that's alive and has arms as well. And the uh, bristling part at the bottom is the legs, and he can talk, so the two of them always have interesting conversations and arguments about the spells. And she can be adjusted so he can, she can sort of fly on this broom, and so forth, but uh, they've been together with Shira through so many adventures trying to stop the evil horde. She's usually put against Shadow Weaver, which I already mentioned in the previous video, to try and match powers against her. So, one of the other females I also have here, uh, warriors that serve in the rebellion, is this very unique looking one due to the fact that she has wings like a butterfly. I don't know a great deal about her other than what I read in her biography, but anyway, this, is called, this character is called Flutterina. She comes with a typical shield that most of the females seem to have and 
a warrior sword. She has very bright wings and she's usually more like a, a how would you call it, a, a flying force of the rebellion. Being able to attack the enemy from above and she's a very nicely done figure and if it's possible to display her by suspending her from a ceiling so that she looks like she's flying that would be the greatest way to do it but she also made an appearance in the vintage Shira cartoon as well so she is also very known among the collectors now aside from her there is only these three left I'll just have to show them separately somehow now these first two here these are the star sisters as they call them they came three of them in a package they were released as a three pack and I'll try my best to hold the third one as well so that you can see them all at the same time so here we go the three sisters who possess magical powers and they are allies of the rebellion they were supposed to be released in the vintage Shira toy line but they never made the final cut so they were not released and I assume that's why they were good candidates to be released in the new line. They have very nice bright colors, no action features among any of them except for maybe one that has a sort of an action feature. Uh, let's start with her. She only has the magic stuff as a weapon and didn't come with anything else. There is nothing removable in her case, there is no extra heads or anything like that. But most of her power seems to come from this star stuff then the next one here again has a stuff and no removable pieces of any sort I mean the head could be removed but there is no extra head to change it uh, again the power comes from the stuff and the final one here that does have an action feature of a sort is this one that's able to make herself look really tall that's her power now you would have all these individual little red pieces and the blue ones here that you would practically have to take the arm apart and put these extra pieces to extend the limbs to look like she's really getting tall or you can make her look like she's just a regular size you would put extra pieces here and on the legs and also uh, on the neck here and make it look like she really can extend her neck as well now I'll show you the uh, the head can come off pretty easily and has just a peg here and then you can just add a few of these pieces to make the, le the neck longer she has uh, the power stuff just like her sisters that allows her to use magic in fighting the evil horde the three sisters were not very popular but there's still some fans of them out there in reality they're not bad figures but to each his own I guess Anyway, that, uh, that would be my discussion for the Shira uh, related characters. And I will just finish this with one that I forgot earlier. One last final piece that's not from Shira but from He Man. Is this flying vehicle here, Sky High vehicle, uh, that was, that's used by the Royal Guards of the, Eter of the Eternia. And this fellow is not a known character who's riding on it, but he appeared on the boxed art of the vintage vehicle version of this one and he, the, uh, Mattel then decided to just simply put him on this vehicle and to pack him together with the vehicle so that there is an, at least a pilot who can pilot it it's very nicely done unfortunately it's missing a very big piece a coach that goes at the back which was released later this uh, last year at a much higher price but if you want to just have this piece then this is all you get the vehicle and the pilot and it's very detailed and very nicely done has a laser gun and a gargoyle head shaped right in the middle and this is only one of the three vehicles that was made so far in the line anyway that would be that I don't have anything further to add for the moment I hope you liked my video and you enjoyed some of the information I gave you here uh, if you like what you see please do subscribe and I'll do my best to post some new videos soon where I will continue discussion about the Masters of the Universe classics. Thank you so much and catch you again later. Bye.